a massive reason that people don't get what they want in this life is because they don't know how. The counter argument to that is that people are just lazy and they don't want it bad enough. I believe that wanting something and desiring something is actually an ability that can be mastered. And we'll get into that today. Today's talk is how I've got what I've wanted in this life and how I've seen so many other people have got what they wanted in this life. And this is for someone that's in a radically different place than where they want to go. This isn't for somebody that has all the network, the resources right in front of them, and they just have to grab it and run with it. This is for somebody that's in a completely different spot in life than where they want to end up. They have a dream. They have a vision. It might not be clear, but they know they want something different. They know they want to become something more, and they want something more for themselves. That's what I'm going to share with you today. Now, we all want so many things. We all want things. We casually say, like, I want this. That'd be nice to have that. God, I want that. But most people, as you can see, especially if you're 25, 30 years old and up, you know that people are talking about what they want. They're talking about ideas all of the time. But very rarely do these ideas and these desires happen. And as time goes on, I find most individuals stop talking about what they want and stop talking about what they dream because I think most people just settle and let their dreams die a slow, awful, quiet death. Now, there is one idea that we all know to be true. If you want X, Y, or Z, the Spanish mansion, a Ferrari, peace in your heart, a loving and connected family, or to find your soulmate one day, the right church for you, the right career, the right place in the world for you. We all know it's not just going to drop out of the sky for you. It'll never happen. We all know deep down that you have to go get it. But figuring out how to get it and building the desire and the will to go get it, that is what's difficult. That is what's an extraordinarily rare challenge for people to actually accomplish in life. But I've had the opportunity to learn from so many successful people that came from trailer parks, mobile homes, the ghetto, trap house, apartment, X, Y, Z, and they have so much, not only material wealth and an extraordinary material life, but they feel and sound so much more alive than they did way back when, when they had nothing and they were in so much pain that they couldn't even see outside of that pain. But I've seen people fight out of that pain. I've seen people fight out of mundane lives that they always felt weren't meant for them. And I've been able to take these ideas that I've learned from so many other people that I had the privilege to meet, adopt those beliefs into myself and my heart, and fight for a life that I knew I wanted. And everything that I lined out and written down in my 2015 goals, every single thing has come completely true and so much more that I didn't even write down. Now, I can tell you that I'm lucky in the sense that most of this happened within a five-year period for me, but you have to understand the path to making yourself into something greater than who you are. That's the adventure of life. That's where you're really going to come alive and have those memories and stories and experiences and make connections and friends and live in a way that you never would have thought before. If we watched a movie and you got to see Frodo start in the Shire, And then five minutes later, he dropped the ring off into the Tower of Doom or whatever it was called, and then wakes up in a bed with a bunch of beautiful elves around him and they have a feast. That would be the worst movie ever. Like, it's not a good movie. It's not what we want. We all deep down want and desire a journey of some sort that's made for us, a journey that we can really develop ourselves in and and grow in. And a bit about my journey so you can connect to my story and see how far I've come is in my own life, I was homeschooled in a very quiet life up until eighth grade. And then eighth grade to 12th grade, that was the biggest transformational shock for me because I was raised in very Christian, simple and sheltered groups of people, mainly poor, mainly conservative, non a very simple American young life but not American in the sense of follow your dreams. I didn't see anyone chasing after something. 
us and our parents seem to just have drifted into a safe and stable place in the world and they had the humility to just keep their head down and continue to work and do the best they can for their family and the job that they had stumbled into for the most part. But when I watched movies, when I hopped on YouTube for the first time, I got to see glimpses of what life could be like out there. I was completely captivated just by watching travel lifestyle videos on YouTube and cars and taking a convertible red classic speeding down the hills of California overlooking the ocean you know like those are the videos that I just I couldn't stop watching I had never experienced a life like that I'd just been in a little tiny town and a little tiny church group and boy scouts and chorus and choir and all these things and and I knew that if someone else is out there especially at my same age that had this by the time I'm 19 20 and really watching these videos a lot there's got to be a way to get it I don't care if their parents had to work 20 years. I don't care if they got an inheritance from somebody because I knew that money came from somewhere. When I saw a spoiled rich kid, I never looked at them with jealousy, except a couple times because of situations involving girls, things like that. But I always wanted to ask what their parents did because I knew that money was generated and came from somewhere. Someone produced something in the world and people paid them for that production. They're rewarded for work they put in at some point of human history. That's how a kid has a trust fund either way. His grandpa slaved away for 55 years building a corporation and he got to leave, leave a piece of that for his children and his children's children. There's nothing wrong with that. So as I was growing up, after I hit puberty, I always had these dreams of what life could be like one day. And they're very soft. They're all in the back of my mind. They're, your dreams are always like a whisper, just nudging you in a certain direction. And for me, it was extremely painful because as I went through high school, I being in the groups that I was in with very safe and sheltered children, I had not developed anywhere near the social skill I needed to operate in a world full of judgment, hate, pain, all from your peers. And I also was not ready for girls in any way, shape, or form. I don't think I spoke directly to a girl, me, until after I graduated high school. They would speak to me after maybe I'd crack a joke out the side of my mouth and I wouldn't look anywhere in their direction, right? But in high school, since I had such an overwhelming amount of insecurity and anxiety clouding over me, and I also wanted that good life. I wanted to join the highest caliber social group that I could. So I hung out at school, at least, with the popular kids, you would say. But I was always on the outside of the group. And each day, it was very painful because I was always standing on the outside of it. I couldn't say anything. And if I said something, it would come off awkward. It would come out of a place of insecurity for the most part. So many eyes would just look at me and judge me, and see me with disdain. And in that moment, of course, you're taught not to say anything after that continues to happen. So for most of my eighth grade in high school, I didn't talk at all. I was very shy. There was many classes where I wouldn't say a word unless I felt completely comfortable around the right classmates around my seat. And even then, all I could say was just casual jokes and just be a clown for attention, right? Because I really crave significance. And that lack of social connection and significance from other people, I found after I graduated high school because I plunged right into the party crowd from different high schools. And the group that I found after high school, it was compacted with all of the rejects from all of the surrounding high schools, just we were just the outcasts, and we all had torn up parents, parents that either didn't love them, didn't believe in them, didn't give them any encouragement. Everyone had divorced parents, broken families, so we're all like broken, ugly ducklings, you could say, but we grabbed a bottle of liquor, and in five minutes, we would have the time of our life, and I rode that road for almost seven years in and out of jail, becoming less and less 
of a human being and slowly losing my soul, dissipating into that world. The underworld is called the underworld for a reason. We like to think of nightclubs as just having fun when you're young, but many people don't come out of that with the same level of identity and purity of soul that they started with. It really can corrupt an individual when taken to the extreme. And by extreme, I mean drinking drugs six days a week, sometimes for multiple years, not the whole seven-year period. I made a radical change when I started just going to the gym and working out and training in 2011, and I haven't stopped since then, but I still stayed in that dark life. And I ended up in a $400 a month roach-infested trap house in the middle of what you could call the hood in bumfuck college town america population 15,000 i mean two bedroom one bath for $400 in 2014 15 that's the cheapest possible place you can find <laughs> and it attracts that kind of person that you're thinking about but as i drifted in that place and realized i was getting older my life was ticking death is coming i couldn't stay there I felt so much pain in that situation, but I numbed it every day with games, porn, alcohol, drugs, club, friends, well, acquaintances, you know those kind of friends. You can't trust any of them, and you can't even trust yourself in that place in life. So you have very little belief and self-esteem and self-confidence that can move you on a different direction. But in the darkest and most numbing time of that seven-year period, I met a young guy, 32 years old, or around there, that had three businesses, had traveled the world, traveled every month, drove sports cars, hung out with beautiful women, had amazing friends of all places in the world. And he was the first person that I decided to bite my tongue, humble myself, and watch him. I watched him that entire first night that I hung out with him at this um social gathering pregame thing I had at my house. And I just listened. I was so captivated by the way that he spoke, his clarity of voice, his clearness of mind, and his total certainty and confidence. When he opened his mouth, everyone in the room listened to him. And I had never seen that in my life. And I was not that person. Through high school, college, no one listened to me. No one cared about what I said because I had no weight to my voice. There was no being behind me. I was known as this this kind of crazy, lunatic, lost boy, never ever land clown. You know, people didn't respect me as a person. And when I met him and when I was open to it, understanding that that could be me and leaning into that should be me. I kept that thought in my mind. I thought about him every day just wanting to be like that. For the first time, I decided to finally start not only working on my body, but on my mind. So I began consuming podcasts, YouTube, and books from people that had what I wanted. Young men that had written books and recorded themselves talking, and I began to absorb what they thought and how they acted. Because we all know you are... The average of the five people you spend the most time with, it's a cliched term. I don't like the term, but it's true. You become what you consume. The thoughts you take into yourself influences and grows how you think or shrinks and murders the best side of you. Fast forward to now, and after many years of determination and diligence and thousands of pages of journaling, and writing, and thinking, and speaking, and meeting so many different people that for the first time, I was even open to meeting and looking for. Because you tend to attract what you want in this world. And now I have a self-sustaining business. I'm not required to manage anything anymore. We did over three and a half million dollars in revenue last year. I have a great team of amazing people that I actually trust, each individual on the team. And at this point, I can do and move into any adventure that I want to out here in the world. And I actually believe that and know that to be true, which is the farthest shot you could imagine seven years ago, 10 years ago, 12 years ago. 
I couldn't think about past the weekend. I could barely think about what I'm going to do the next day, let alone that day. All I was worried about is doing whatever feels good and getting by through whatever means I have to and just coasting in a sea of half-assed chaos with numbing pleasure to sedate me long enough not to blow my brains off. And I see most people are living in that way. There's a quote, most men live quiet lives of desperation. And I believe this to be true. I've interviewed over a thousand people one-on-one face-to-face, and I'm really interested in what makes people think and what makes them tick. I've met face-to-face over a thousand homeowners and sat in their living rooms and talked with them and watched them and see how they live their life. And taking that and combine that with me plunging into the darkest parts of the world and also being able to be fully invested into the lightest parts of the world, your church, your choir, your community groups, your positive organizations, the self-help, entrepreneurial, business, high-performance community. I've seen so much of this life and this world, and I'm a deep thinker, so I've been able to synthesize so much of what I've learned and so much of what I've observed about other people and how they think and what's brought them into the place they're at in life that it's given me the path and strategy for how anyone in this world can make themselves and their external life change. And in my experience, what I've observed in the world, to change your external life, you have to change your internal life. The outside world will always reflect the inside of you. They have a mere effect, so you're working on them in tandem. It's impossible to do one without doing the other. So when you want to change something, when you want anything, you want to make more money, you want to live a bigger life, you want this dream, You have to take into full account both. And there is a step-by-step path to this. But most people won't be willing to get to this point because you do have to at least be feeling enough pain in the present moment and also decide right now that you're a human and you need to have faith and belief and hope in yourself as a human being and an extremely adaptable amazing, moldable machine and incredible being that has so much inside your DNA that has yet to be unlocked. But if you're at that point and you're willing to change and to at least start on a path and start dreaming of a better future, then I believe everyone needs to start writing. And what you're going to write about is a series of exercises that is going to plot out exactly where you are in life, who you are in life, and where you're going to go, where you want to go, and who you have to become and what you have to do to get there. Because to get anywhere in life, any place, you have to have a map. And you don't know how to use the map unless you first have your bearing on where you are And you have a destination and a path of where you're going to go. But just like a ship out there in the middle of stormy waters where you may be right now, there's fog everywhere. You might not know exactly where you've came from and you might not know and you won't know exactly where you need to go forward. But there's always a better direction than just drifting in the middle of that dark and cold and awful sea that just brings sickness and misery and quiet, desperate sadness to your life and everyone you know around you if you stay there. So the first thing you need to write down, and I do all of this work in my iPhone notes, by the way, because I edit this every month for years and years and years. I look at this every day. This is, you're going to be writing down a life plan for yourself. And you can use this every morning to anchor yourself And bring belief into yourself about who you are. Because most people that are stuck in life, they lack the confidence and they have so much fear clouding the vision of what they want life to be like. And they always see the future as either hopeless or too much pain to even try. Too much fear, which is pain, to even try. So if you do this and do these exercises and write the answers to these questions down 
Grab your iPhone notes, your Android notes, a computer, laptop, Google document. It doesn't matter. Somewhere, paper if you want, but I do not recommend it. You can use this as a daily map that will take you somewhere. And having a map is hope. It's a destination. It's faith. It's a vision. It's a target. Imagine being a sailor at sea and you guys don't know what's going on. You're just drinking below deck. It's storming above you. You don't care. Fuck it. Well, your life feels meaningless, mundane, and hopeless, and all you're doing is chasing pleasure after the hard work up there, scrubbing the decks, setting the sails, going in circles, plugging the holes in the ship because you keep hitting rocks because you don't know where you're going. But if you had a map and you put on the captain's hat and you grab that wheel, you have no idea how much better your life will feel under your control. And to a way larger degree than you think, you're always in control of your life, not necessarily every situation, but how you perceive each situation and how you act after each situation and what you do with each situation, how you respond to life's difficulties and what it throws at you. So if you have an iPhone note out, the first thing you're going to want to write in bold capital letters is who are you? And you're going to write down on one side or one section all of the great things about you. And really think about this. Listen to some inspiring music, something you like, not with lyrics will distract you. Some movie soundtrack music, like just play something good. And think about who are you? Put all the good things down. Everything that somebody's told you about what they saw in you, anyone that's ever encouraged you. And it might be really difficult to think about those things. But just watch yourself. Think about yourself in a day-to-day. Do you show up to work every day on time? Diligence. You respect the company that you work at. You might have a willingness to please others because of that. You have the determination not to let others down. Just from that, so thinking about how you act in day-to-day life, what you've done over your life, even the littlest things that require humility to really see, write those good things down. And write the good things down about what you look like too, your best features, your physicality, the health that you have. You know, you may be in a wheelchair, you might not be. Put either of those down, right? And after you finish writing down the positives and you're in a good state of mind, you can do this while walking around the house, listening to some epic soundtrack music, right? Or something, or just pause and do this and come back. The next thing you're gonna wanna write down is the negative sides of you the weaknesses, the things, the points that you can improve, right? Maybe you have a tendency to be lazy and procrastinate to the last second. That's most people, by the way, unless they really enjoy it and have a reason to do it. And we'll get into that later. Maybe you're harsh with other people. Maybe you have a tendency to disrespect someone too quickly. Maybe you do lack a degree of self-confidence in your appearance. Maybe you're too prideful and think you're superior than other people and it kind of puts you in a dimmer and more lonely space in life. Maybe you judge people too quickly and negatively and it keeps you from making good friends. So once you've got all that finished, the second part, number two, is where are you? Where are you at in life? What city are you in? What job are you in? How does it all feel? What does your relationships look like? What does your fitness and health look like? What kind of financial situation are you in? What do you think about where you're at? Do you feel you're in this small bubble, kind of trapped in a habit loop, and you're just stuck and you can't get out? Bring all of that into the answer to this question. Just continue to write on exactly where you're at and really feel it and be aware of it because awareness is the first step to being able to change or shift anything in this world, no matter what it is. And number three is why are you here? And really think about this question with the level of accountability and responsibility. If you're 28 years old, you can't say that you're here in this life and you're limited right now because of the way your mom and dad treated you when you were young. You are going to naturally have a desire to put excuses down and the wrong story but try to make this story as honest and accurate as possible. Just like if you're plotting a course, you don't want to lie about where you're at on the map 
to feel better about yourself. You want to know exactly where you're at on the map and why, how you got there. So you can change and shift your journey out in the ocean to get to that good place. So the truth will always set you free and recognizing it no matter how much you don't want to recognize it. For the longest time, I didn't know I was where I was because I was scared. I was so scared and so fearful of the world that I didn't even know I was scared and fearful. I always did whatever came safest to me because I never felt safe in my childhood emotionally. So really get honest here. Why are you here? What have you done to bring you to this point? And who is currently around you now that might be holding you back in certain ways? But always look to yourself first before shifting responsibility. Because if you have people in your life right now, they're there because of you. So you have to own that and know that. Number four is what do you want? This is the best part. Because this is where you get to decide a vision for your future. And you really need to be present, alone, listening to your favorite song, and being completely honest with what you feel deep down inside of you. Try not to move towards things that you want out of mere insecurity or out of fear, but also decide what you want out of a place of what's best for me. What do I need? What will be better for me? What do I want, but also what does 50-year-old Kyle want for me? What does 65-year-old Kyle want for me? What would my ancestors, my entire DNA's bloodline since the beginning of human time want for me? What do they think would be best for me? And you can categorize this like I do. I put in physical body. What do I want to look like and feel like? And this has to be done in a realistic way. I used to put unrealistic things and it always made me feel like crap, right? Put your ideal though that you feel is possible. The next category that I use for what do you want is emotions and meaning. How do I want to feel every day when I wake up? What kind of meaning and purpose do I want to feel in my life? Do I want to feel purpose and meaning? You can put those things in here, you know? Um, like I put, I want to feel positive, confident, driven, aware, aligned, and excited pulled by a purpose and faith in my future. Now, don't steal what I put. You know, you, of course, you can mix it up. But I just want to give you an example because this is a difficult section. It's something that not most people think about. But it's what the best in the world think about. And it's what gets the greatest of human beings to the best destinations. Look at Tony Robbins, for example. One of the greatest humans alive. He got to where he is through absolutely extraordinary daily habits and rituals and constantly every 90 days deciding what he wants for the next 90 days and the next year and the next five years you always are going to have a plan and then adapt and shift and tweak that plan in the future you just don't plot a map when you're dark and in the fog of the ocean and you can't see any land in sight you're just going to plot the best one you can so choose the best one you can number three as part of the categories under what do you want is career and mission. What do you want in your job or career or mission to look like? Like, what do you want for it right now? And then also, what do you want for it in the future? You know, write the ideal here, the dream, something that inspires you. Number four is relationships. What kind of people do you want around you? How do you want to feel around them? How do you want them to treat you? How do you want your relationship? How do you want your family to feel like? And number four is contribution and spirituality. I think these go hand in hand. This is really serving a higher purpose because we all have human needs. And one of those needs is to feel like we're contributing to something good. We're helping grow another human being or many other human beings. We're giving back in some certain way. And we feel like we're useful, like we have a purpose for the greater good. We all want that. And number six is adventure and hobbies. Write down what interests you maybe want to take up, what kind of goals that you might have for them. You know, what do you want to be doing? Do you want to go to the movies every time a great movie comes out? Do you want to go to every single dance or theater event that comes to town that looks good? Do you want to be going on a vacation every three months or a cruise? Whatever it may be, it's 
all up to you, of course. But decide, you know, because life has to have some type of spice and variety to it. We get really bored and really just start sedating ourselves. Alcohol, TV, social media, video games, just addiction of some sort, gossip. We all have these vices that are keeping us from living fulfilling and really meaningful lives. So decide what adventures and hobbies you want to partake in that you could really get behind. And the last is financial and environment. Like what kind of city you want to be living in, if not the one you're in? What kind of house do you want? What kind of financial stability or amount of money or amount of income are you wanting to make? What kind of investments that you might want? And what do you want for your space? Like in this box, I actually put um, the cars that I want to drive, where I want to wake up in the morning. I want to be able to see a sunrise from my house. You know, I want to be able to be near blue water and a blue sky. I want to live in a very sunny place, right? So just some examples. And all of these points are underneath the what do you want category. And this is going to be the hardest question for you to answer, but it's what drives us. Because we all want things, but the reason why we want them, the why is going to be the motivating factor that you have to focus on. The why we do something is the why we do something. So you have to build on and clarify why you want something and really grow that part of you. Because desire is built like a fire. It's kindled and it's sparked and it's focused on and it's nurtured and it's grown. The day I started my company versus five years in, I was way more driven, way more dedicated, way more fired up on year five than I was day one by far. I idealistically thought I was more motivated in the beginning, but if you watched my actions in the beginning versus five years in, I mean, pff, there was days I was sleeping in, I'm just moving, just getting by. Yeah, I'm networking, I'm doing things, I'm learning things, I'm hiring consultants here and there, but I wasn't putting in as much work and diligence and determination and passion that I was five years in because it's built and it's kindled over time. So why do you want that? And this is a question that each sentence that you write down, you're going to have a tendency to write down more wants. Well, I want the sports car because I want to feel confident. That's not actually a why. You want to be confident and you also want the sports car. It's really good to differentiate those things because many guys driving sports cars out there lack so much confidence. It's unbelievable. I've met a lot of guys with Lamborghinis and Ferraris and you could just like sneeze on them and their identity would just blow over. So, but when you have that tendency to write something down, that's really what you want, go ahead and drop that back in your, what do you want category? But why do you want that are going to be phrases that start with because, and they're going to be deep and rooted in you. And some of them can be things that you want, but they're going to be more pure, more strong and usually be more purpose-driven and tied to your childhood as well and how you developed. It's like, I want financial success because I never want to feel the way I did when I would look at my mom every time she got her paycheck and she just felt sad to me for that entire day. Like, I never want to feel the way I did when I was at the store and my mom's credit card wouldn't swipe at the counter and we had to return all the groceries and wait next week. Another example, I want to get into this new career that I really desire deep down in me because I don't want to let my parents down and I want my kids to look up to me. Like even though that's a want and you can put that back in the want category, that's something that's really going to be driving. That's a purpose. And a why is always something emotional. I want the sports car because it'll make me confident. That is so weak. It's not only weak sounding, it's actually weak. And that won't inspire you. So really take your time on this one. Why do you want that? Why do you want all of these things? You can break them down. For every want that you want, you can write a why down. And I did that. That'll take you some time. I mean, I want like 68 different things. Now, they can all be summarized in like one sentence for each category. Because the things that we want are always because of the way we think they'll make us feel when we get there. But there's always a balance, right? You can be sitting inside the Auschwitz camp in World War II 
and a good and healthy life and physical body for you would be a good thing to want and it also make you feel good when you get there. Both would be good for you completely, of course. So I do not subscribe at all to the idea that's come out of Eastern philosophy that says you should just stop wanting and desiring things. I'm not going to be a monk sitting and drifting in a cave for the rest of my existence being satisfied with just rice and chopsticks and rocks. That's not me and that is not the American dream and that is too far to another extreme. There's a balance between Eastern and Western philosophy and it's tied into going after a dream, getting that dream and also making sure to feel good along the way and feel good when you get there too because every human being needs growth internally and externally. And when you grow internally, your external world will change too and vice versa, but more so the internal. The next section is who do you have to become and what do you have to do? So imagine the person that has this life, that has what you want. What is that person going to act like? What's the best version of yourself What would that person be like and act like and wake up like and move like and think like? Maybe you need to build a stronger degree of courage. Maybe you have to start speaking up for yourself, telling people what you think and how you feel. And one tip for the relationship side of things, if you've described what you want in a partner, what you want this person to look like and be like, what you want your friends to be like, you're not going to get that unless you are those things too. Now, you're not going to have everything, but if you want loving friends, you're going to have to be loving too, or they won't hang with you. They will drift off and leave you because you're just too selfish and you're taking from them. If you want friends that are givers, you're going to have to be a giver too. You attract who you are in this life, both people and the place that you're at. So write down who do you have to become And then a separate section for what do you have to do? Like, what will you have to do to get there and get these things slowly but surely? Like, what would that path look like? But break it down. This is going to take you a long time. And you're going to most likely have to do this over separate days or like an entire day. I've done this over an entire day, 10 hours of riding, walking around. I went to the gym on the treadmill for like eight miles walking, just typing and typing and typing on my phone because I know And I believe this is the path. You can't change where you are unless you have a map, period. We all know this, but it takes a rare individual, and I hope that's you, to grab that phone and make your map. And what do you have to do to get there? You know, it's like, I'm going to have to be in this type of sales position because where I'm working, I'm not going to make that much money, right? You can, there's a lot of things you can put in there. Keep it broad and keep it big, but you're going to want to break this down into small steps and develop a plan later on of how to get here step by step because everyone in life got to where they are based on taking step by step by steps. And we all start on different starting lines and we all have different opportunities right in front of us. But in my life, I have seen almost every individual that I've ever really talked to, they always have the keys to the castle right in front of them or right around the corner or like two phone calls away. Not necessarily two direct phone calls, but you call one guy and that guy knows this guy. There's always a way to search and find it. Most people aren't willing to move out of their pain because they feel like changing is just going to be too painful. They might as well just stick in the sedated life that they're currently living and just slowly drift and crash their ship one day when they're 70 and die. But I hope that's not you. And I don't believe that's all human beings. I think anyone is completely capable of real change, but it all comes down to at the least having the guts and the faith and the hope and the determination just to ride out their map. But once it's out there, once you write it out, once you get your deepest vision out of you, very rarely do I see people not move towards that journey. Because once it's out there, once you speak the words, you're not only telling it to yourself and sharing it with yourself and it becomes real, it's no longer deep in your brain, but I think it takes on some type of life in the universe. That sounds heebie-jeebie, wada-wada, whatever. But there's something to the power of words. People are killed 
for the words that they use all through human history. And people lead nations through nothing more than words. Nothing is more important than your speech. So as you write down and continue to write down, what do you have to do? Develop a plan for this later of just the little things that you could do on a daily basis just to get yourself going. Like if your room's a wreck and you don't do the dishes, it's a great idea to start there because you're not gonna be able to build a life outside of you if you can't even get your inside life in perfect order or much better order. Nothing has to be perfect, of course. And that's where I started. My house was a disaster. Everything was always a wreck unless like I had friends coming over and I wanted things to look good for them. But I just would let it just dissolve into chaos. Pizza boxes, four locos, beer cans, cockroaches, mold, the works. I mean, I'm talking 24 years old. I'm not some 19-year-old college idiot. And now you walk in my house, there's not a hair on the floor. I got two robot vacuums. I have maids. I have my place spotless every time. And how you get there in any domain, any life category is by taking baby steps that you're humble enough to take. And the last category is where could you end up? Like really think about this. Where's the best place you could end up in your life if you did all the things that you knew you should do? You followed your instincts. You followed your gut. You wanted to walk down the best path for you and follow that destiny and always do what you feel you should do. Write what that life would really feel like for you. What would it be like? And then end this. Or maybe write this in the beginning. I'm not sure. You decide. But the next part of this where could you end up section is write how horrible your life could be and feel like if you just kept going on the same path or you just kept drifting, what would your life look like when you're 45, 55, 75? It does not matter what age you are. Anyone can change in a moment. It just takes a decision to start a new path. And a new path is always walked down step by step. So right where you could end up, right how dark and how awful your life could be if you didn't do any of the things that you felt you should do. If you just decided to just cave to your worst addictions, pleasure-seeking habits, and avoidance tactics, the gossip, the TV, the games, the silence when you want to say something, what would you end up like? How bitter, how resentful, how depressed, how sickly would you look and feel like there? Because if you're going to determine a path to your heaven in this world, you need to know what to stay away from. You need to run away from something too. So choose your hell and feel it, man. And feel the hell right now around you. Decide to look at yourself in the eyes. Really see you and your life and what you're in and what you're doing for what it is. Feel that pain and use that as motivation to change and as inspiration to launch into something better for you. I'm telling you, you can have the adventure of your life and it's just around the corner. Or you can stay weaker and dissipate and slowly evaporate in your quiet, loop-filled life and just drift on. You got to pick your poison, man. You always have a choice. Which pain do you choose? Choosing pain is always better than letting pain just hit you in the mouth whenever it comes in life. Choose your pain and know why it's worth it. So the categories are who are you? Good and bad. Where are you? Good and bad. Why are you here? What do you want? Why do you want that? Who do you have to become? What do you have to do? And where could you end up? And remember, this life is yours and yours alone. It's yours, man. And you're the director of your story. Each day can be a new chapter in your book, or you can just be looking and flicking through all the old pages or looking at somebody else's book wishing you had their story. But it's always up to you and it's always yours. And you can always make life so much better or you can make it so much worse and way faster too. If you enjoyed this and you want to listen to more, please subscribe 
favorite, like, download, review. Follow me on all my channels. I've recently exploded on TikTok to a degree. In just eight days, we're at 11,000 followers. Follow me on YouTube where I have videos of these podcasts. I'm going to start interviewing other people here soon. And subscribe everywhere you can to keep building this message so we can help shift this world and where it's going. Because that's why I'm here. I'm sick of complaining about this world and looking at it crumble and seeing it die. We all know life was better in the 80s. We all know life was better in the 50s. And the only way we can get there is by having a common vision and deciding to lift ourselves up, become individuals, and charge forward, set on building a better life for ourselves and who we care about first. And that's how the world changes. That's how society changes. It's, a society is nothing more than a group of individuals believing the same things. So if we change our beliefs together, we change our lives together, that's when the world changes together too. Enjoy your week and live a life that has you feeling alive.